Hello all and welcome back to The Book Brood. Um, if you're back, thank you so much for sticking with us. This is our January wrap-up, soon to be followed by our February wrap-up because yep. it's almost the end of February. So um, I think I have I have five books. You have four? I have four. So, so, so you I start? will go ahead and lead. And I will start with Kurt Vonnegut's The Sirens of Titan. This is the third book by Kurt Vonnegut on that list. And this is by far the most so it's it's like a sat satirical bizarre that's that's a better way to put it satirical uh. bizarre in that um this rich man decides to make the main character uh this pawn in his game where he's going to make him the most ab abhorred character in human history and just the adventure that this character goes on through this entire process of being a puppet through this whole thing. And, it, and if, if you've read Vonnegut before, especially Cat's Cradle, then you understand the satirical nature that he can take with his story writing. But anyway, it was, it was better than I expected. So, um, yeah, uh, one that uh, kind of unsung that I've noticed of Kurt Vonnegut. Uh, I don't hear many people talking about Sirens yeah. of Titan. So I don't think I've ever heard of it. It is before, um, you know. YouTube. Yeah, so very, very entertaining through the read. Mm. Uh, the first book I read in January was Waiting for Eden by Elliot Ackerman. And this book, oh my gosh, it was this tiny little, tiny little thing. It was probably less than 200 pages. But it was so intense. Um, definitely. I think I'm remembering. Yeah. You reading this now. Definitely not a story that everyone's gonna like, but I, I really enjoyed the emotional impact that this had. So this was about um, a marine um, who was injured in the line of duty. His best friend was killed. And the best friend is narrating the story as like a ghost or a spirit or an angel or something like that. And you're seeing the main character, Eden, and he was so badly injured that he had to have like all of his limbs amputated. He can't see, he can't speak, he can't hear. Um, he has brain damage, so he's very confused. And he has been in this, this, still technically alive, but just cannot function without life support. I remember this one now. It broke my heart. Just, yeah, you, it's been just years. Telling me this, about it. Yeah, yeah he, he's oh been goodness. in the hospital for years. Mm -hmm. And then his wife is there with him every day. Um, and they're, uh, it's a... So they briefly touch on the topic of um, assisted suicide. It's a theme that a lot of the medical professionals keep um, hinting at with the wife, um, you know, saying he's never going to get better. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But the wife just can't let go. And it's so heart-wrenching because you... Are you get some chapters narrated from the best friend as the ghost. You get some chapters narrated by Eden himself, and he's so confused and he's in so much pain. Um, and then you get to see his wife Mary's point of view, and it was just oh my god, it mm -hmm. it was intense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sounds like a rough ride. But a good kind. Like, yeah. It, it was a deep emotional, like, it pulled the feels out, mm -hmm. you know? All right. Uh, so the next thing I read in January was Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. Uh, you might not have heard of this, this book, <laughs> but uh, Netflix recently came out with a movie adaptation of this. Heidi read this a long time ago when we were very active on BookTube, and she loved it and recommended it to me immediately. Mm-hmm. And I just put it off and put it off and put it off. But I am so glad that I read it. And she loves dust jackets and had actually never seen what this 
book looks like naked and I read dust jacket books naked because it just feels better in my hands but it's a beautiful book anyway it was a very suspenseful intense story that it is the best way I can describe describe the strengths of that book um, of this book here so it is of course it is about Mallory and it is in a world where there are creatures that if you see them you are either going to kill yourself, kill other people, then kill yourself, or if you're already crazy, you're going to try and make other people see these creatures. It is, um, in just discussion with my friends, the, the tension of this book is what is the key to what makes it satisfying if you like that kind of thing. Um, I have, some of my friends did not enjoy this story because what did it tell you? What did it resolve by the end of it? And I'm like, well, you have to take into account the setting that the story is taking place in. Yeah. And it boiled down to my defense of this was it is about the tension. If you love tension in a story, it is a great story to what? suck you in. <laughs> yeah, and just and just keep you just there. Yeah. Until the end, even with a broken timeline. Yeah. Um, what I liked about it and what I would argue against people who say what's the point or whatever mm -hmm. is that it was a novel first. And mm -hmm. you are reading it on the page and it's a book and a story about people who are blindfolded, who cannot see. So the story is being told through their other senses, right? Yes. So yes. many books mm -hmm. rely so heavily on um, visual descriptions. And so I think it must have been a big challenge to the author to mm -hmm. write a story that did not rely on that. And I think that, that was really cool. And obviously going to a different medium, right, to a movie that is a visual thing right it, it completely changes everything i i very much enjoyed it i'm glad i read it i'm glad i watched the movie too mm -hmm. i thought the movie was was just fine for how they adapted it i i can only handle a slight amount of suspense and horror but i did like bird box and I've heard that some people are comparing it to, like, A Quiet Place. Right, just that. But, like, it's kind of similar in that, in the story. It's not, necessarily, not necessarily terrifying as you're watching it. Mm -hmm. It's just tense. The second book that I finished in January was Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. And I'm pretty sure I started this one in December. Um... This was a book club pick, and I did not love it. I enjoyed Uprooted more, um, but so, so Spinning Silver, it's pretty popular on here. It's YA. Um, it's inspired by like um, Eastern European uh, folklore, and it's kind of loosely based on the Rumpelstiltskin spinning straw okay. into gold yeah. thing all right all right but naomi novik completely turned that whole you know story on its ear or whatever and and it's a story about a girl named miriam who is the daughter of a money lender and her father's a horrible money lender but she takes over the business and she is so good at it that she's able to turn other people's money like little pennies and in small you know money mm -hmm. into gold like she is able to she's such a good businesswoman right that she right. she brags about i can turn silver into gold it seems like it's magic but yeah. that's the thing is she accidentally attracts the attention of these magical beings that live in mm. the woods and the magic king is like, okay, if you can really turn silver into gold, here's a bag of silver, I'll be back tomorrow, I expect it to be gold. And, and he does this several times, and he's like, if you can do this three times, I will bring you more and more silver each time, then I'll marry you and you can be queen of my realm or whatever. And she's like, 
I don't want to, but I also <laughs> don't want you to kill me. So, you know, um, and I think honestly, if the story was just about Miriam and her, uh, you know, money lending and then with the Star King situation, I think I would have liked that so much better. Uprooted was one single point of view. And I think that was the best way to tell that story. And I think this would have been, uh, and I think this story would have benefited from it also, but we also, um, had two other women characters, strong female characters, but I just didn't really care so much for their storylines. And then you got these random chapters thrown in there told by like, there's one by a little boy that just felt weird and disconnected not, from the main storyline. Yeah, not right? necessary at all. Um, I thought it was too long and too many points of view. Um, I I was honestly kind of bored most of the time. Um, mm. I, there were some good parts in there, but for the mar most part, man. That's too bad because I know that it took you a long time to get through Uproot and you and you liked it. Every right. time you push through it, mm -hmm. and so that's disappointing that its follow up didn't didn't keep you there. Right. Um, yeah. I'm there. There was some cool things that she did with some of the magic. Um, specifically, there's a cottage in the woods that's between realms, and you've got characters living in the same space but in different realms. So, hmm. it, as they move objects around the cottage. It moves it in the other realm, and and so they're each creeped okay. out because they're like, "Is this a ghost? What's Things happening?" Are just moving around, yeah. And I thought that was awesome. <laughs> All right, the next thing I read in January is *Pandora's Star* <laughs> by <laughs> Peter F. Hamilton, which I began reading in January of 2016. So oh, two wow. years to the month, uh, finally finished this book, and I have to credit Scribd for it because I finally switched yep. to an audiobook version. Uh, this is an epic. Um, this is the second book on the list of sci-fi that is by Peter F. Hamilton. The first was Body Dysfunction. I ended up reading, apparently that is the first book in a trilogy. I ended up audiobooking the first two. Oh. And I can't tell you what it's about. I remember it was about like a colony. There were some prisoners there and there was a prisoner that could distort other people's perception of reality. And he was causing a lot of trouble and, and killing people and, and doing things like that. That's about all I remember from it. Um, Hamilton can spin a very intricate web of connections between multiple characters through a massive narrative that said you need to have the patience to put in the time to be able to appreciate something like that i very much love science fiction this is something i i admit that i could not handle as a physical book just in yes, with thing how is huge it's 1100 some pages i think oh on, my god in the, uh, 988 okay um in the this mass, version. mass market paperback but so Whew. Lots of pages, and, and that's intimidating. I'll admit that that's intimidating to me as a reader. Yeah. But I finished it in an audiobook. He, I cannot fault him as a writer at all. Um, it, it's just lengthy, so you just have to be willing to put in that kind of investment. It was like I read The Count of Monte Cristo at the end oh of 2018, yeah. and I knew within the first 16th, of that of that book that is like I I'm almost need to reread this as soon as I'm done with it because there is just so much there's so much happening mm -hmm. and so to to Hamilton's credit it is it is incredible that he was able to spin this this story this massive story that is about wormholes and intergalactic war and investigation and all all of these different concepts woven into this this massive space opera is yeah. is truly what you'd have to call it um the third thing i read in january was this is where i leave you by jonathan troper tropper something like that and this was a 
family drama type story, um, a book about feelings and working through your feelings and emotional healing, but told in such a humorous sort of way. Um, so this is a story about Judd Foxman and his life has completely gone to shit. His, uh, he found out his wife is cheating on him with his boss. So he, his marriage has fallen apart. He's lost his job. He's living in a crappy little apartment and he just feels so bad for himself. And then all of a sudden he finds out his father died and his father's dying wish was that his whole family sit Shiva for seven days. And he doesn't hang out or talk to his family very much at all. And so this is a huge thing being under one roof with uh, the whole family for seven days. Um, but it's a whole story about, you know, everyone comes together and everyone's like fronting, like their life is not that bad. And then, and then all of it comes out and then mm -hmm. they all kind of work through their issues together and they're stronger for it at the end, you know. Just that natural progression of spending that much time mm -hmm. with people. It's like seven days almost yeah. is like kind of a breaking point of being exactly. real with people. Yeah. <laughs> but I think the main thing that I loved about this story, because I really did enjoy it. I thought it was really good. Um, it hit me in the feels, but the I think the best thing about it was that um, theme of, you know, oftentimes life doesn't go the way you want it to. And sometimes you realize that um, your life just sucks and that that happens so often to so many people and, and that just because you're a grown up doesn't mean like your life is <laughs> altogether, you know, perfect or whatever. Like, what is a grown up, right? Like, right, yeah. Yeah, um, that you feel all together in control of things. Exactly. And, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. I, I enjoyed that part, and so, um, yeah. How did the movie stand up? I think the movie did really well. I loved the casting, um, and I think it translated really well. The next thing I read in January oh, is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. Challenge this book. was a challenge book. Why did you want me to read this? I have to ask before I get into this. Okay, this book was one that I did not like to read, but it stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And I kept thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and just mulling it over. And as I like digested and marinated in it for a few weeks, I realized that I was really glad I read it. Mm -hmm. And I got a lot out of it even though I didn't like the actual reading it. So you read Brave New World last mm -hmm. year, and I told you that is exactly how I felt about it, that I just trudged through it. Yeah. And I was glad I finished it, but on on thinking about it, I liked it much more than actually reading through it. I, But you loved Brave New World. Oh, yeah. Actually yeah. reading through it. I, I loved this. Really? Reading <laughs> through it. I... I, I loved it, but it tore me apart at, oh, yeah. at the same time. Yeah. This is a story that it's hard to not get into spoilers about this, but it is about a group of people trying to find their place in the world and within themselves and within their community of peers mm -hmm. and their struggle to try and find what that is in a world that is constantly telling them and showing them that they do not belong or that they only belong for a specific purpose that they don't even know about until much later in life. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's, it's very hard to talk about this without, without spoilers. Because honestly, part mm -hmm. of the punch is, is figuring it out when you do. Right. Yeah. Right. And and you know from chapter one that, that it, it plants the seed right away that something very difficult is happening. Mm -hmm. And the connection that the trio of main characters have in this is so intimate. And you, you only see it from one character's point of view, Karen, mm -hmm. but you still feel so much empathy for the other two main characters and 
by the end of it, it's, so if you want to avoid spoilers at all, like, you know, turn this off at this point, but you just feel so much loss. You feel so empty mm -hmm. for just everything that happened in this book and yes very very much pulls on the heartstrings and there's yeah but very touching too to to read through so um yeah never let me go definitely um thank you yeah. thank you for giving that one to me as a challenge good good i'm glad that's so weird though that you loved the <laughs> reading of it but you hated Brave New I mean, it makes sense. We don't have the similar tastes in books, but but that's cool. Yeah, we uh, we started off the year with some hard hitters. Mm -hmm. um, but the last book that I read in January was the complete opposite of the hard hitters, <laughs> the heart wrenchings. Okay, so I read The Lightning Struck Heart by T.J. Klune. And, okay, this, not for everyone, Definitely not for everyone. This is a story about Sam, who is a magician's apprentice, and his best friend, Gary, who is a hornless gay unicorn, and his other best friend, Tiggy, who is a half-giant, and they get in adventures. Um, well, they try to go on adventures, but they keep getting kidnapped, and the bad guys always monologue, and so the Sam and Gary and Tiggy just sit there and they're like, Oh my god, why are they monologuing again? It's so ridiculous. And this is the sassiest, funniest, like, kind of like slapstick humor, but also like, um, definitely has a lot of like, mature and sexual humor in it, which it was just... Oh, I loved it. I thought this was so funny. Um, basically, the storyline is the prince gets kidnapped by a dragon and Sam and Night Delicious Face, which is not his name, but that's what <laughs> the trio calls him. Um, they all have to go on this adventure to go save the prince. And, you know, shenanigans happens. And uh, it was hilarious. But there was a, a deeper theme running through it of like found family and um and turning stereotypes on their heads you know just because um the main character Sam he's like this tiny little um like twink you know basically he's like the most powerful magician ever like anyone's ever seen he's like this sassy like really gay like flamboyant but he's so powerful and anyway so the whole thing is about like Breaking stereotypes and friendship and found family and I loved it and it was amazing. You played that preview, the audible uh -huh. preview or whatever for it and I, I, <laughs> I, I feel like it just like stereotypes a type of humor that I enjoy probably too much because it's a stereotype but yeah. just the the queens just going back and forth yes. with each other yeah. about just... Anything, mm -hmm. anything and everything. That's everything. Just, it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what well, I know, and they do. Uh, and so Sam and Gary, the hornless gay unicorn, they have these moments where it's like a really intense like battle scene or like the bad guys are like, there's no hope left and they're all going to die. And that's the moment where they decide to like just catty bitch at each other. <laughs> and it's just. It's the best. All right, so on a much different note, yes. back to, the, back to the, the far end of the emotional spectrum here. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I read in in January was Solaris by Stanislaw Lem. This is Stanislaw Lem's second um, of his two novels on the top 100 sci-fi list. And this is an actual novel as opposed to the short stories, which was the Siberiad, which I had mixed feelings on. Um but this it this was a deep deep thought story about a mysterious planet where there is intelligent life but it is in the form of this ocean that's on this oh, planet yeah. and the scientists 
that go there to study it are very inconclusive about what they find when they come back from from the Solaris station, if they do come back. And when our main character here arrives at the station, he finds out that the people that come to Solaris station have what they call as guests. And that is essentially this life form on Solaris, this ocean, pulling memories from their minds of people that they were very closely connected to and recreating them in a physical form. And so our main character, his wife is brought to, is, is a guest, is his guest on Solaris Station. And as the story progresses, you find out that she had actually killed herself and so this story touches so much on our memories of the people that were close to us and how we feel like we affected them and what what they truly would be like if they were purely what our perception of that person was and nothing else because this this life form has nothing but the memories of the people there to make these guests and it's just a it's a very very touching and introspective story on our connections to one another as humans um a very a very great book the way you describe that kind of reminded me of the last of the rama books when um I don't know if this is a spoiler or not, but basically when the aliens give a couple of the characters, like, mm -hmm. um, what was the main character? Or the Nicole. Woman? Nicole. Yeah. Okay. So her daughter gets a, a mm -hmm. clone or like a replica, a replica of Nicole. Yeah. Of right, Nicole. right. That's right. They did. They made a replica yeah, of and... Nicole, and she saw her daughter connecting. Well, she her with, daughter like... had lived with this replica or this clone or whatever oh, that's for so right, long. That's right. Her and they her had daughter, inside yeah, she had jokes. actually been separated for they so. Had... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. And so it was like, kind. It was based off of the model of her. Right. Mm -hmm. It was like. They had all of her brain scans and all of her... But it, but it yeah, wasn't her. But it was this life outside of mm -hmm. her, which actually brought me back to something I wanted to touch on. I actually, in 2018, read the Southern Reach trilogy by Jeff mm -hmm. Vandermeer, and I could tell the amount of inspiration that he took from this book, or at least that I'm guessing that he took from this book. Yeah. Because it he he was going for that effect of ambiguous mystery that makes you really ponder just your your existence as as a a being in the universe and yeah so i i feel like there were a lot of flaws with jeff vandermeer's um annihilation you know universe um but like this is this is it done right yeah <laughs> i feel like i mean it was it was worth reading Annihilate. I'm not trying to put down that that series. It, I I enjoyed Annihilation, but I I was not satisfied with the trilogy as a whole. But oh. interesting, awesome. I've I've heard a couple of people talking about that one recently, mm -hmm. and and I was actually impressed that I that you you saw one of the bigger booktubers that read this in 2018. Yeah, and um, just as booktube overall in general this is not something that's generally up their alley but it was on their list of best things they read in 2018 and i was i was that that just yeah. that just tickled me on the inside <laughs> but i think in the one year or year and a half that we've been gone i think a lot of booktube is starting to branch out more I think I've kind of noticed that awesome. too, and the little bit that I've still maintained. We're we're gonna start watching and and interacting with the BookTube community more, but yeah. I still watch all the time, but I use my private account, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so that was our January wrap up. Whoop, I think whoop. this came in maybe forty minutes or something like that. You'll we'll probably get this by so, April. So, yeah. Yay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bye Thanks, guys. Everyone. Hopefully, we'll have a lot more videos coming out on a regular basis.
Take care.